It's time for Remodel Revolution. And now, an award-winning contractor with over 40 years experience. Here is Alex Guthrie. Welcome to another episode of Remodel Revolution. We're coming to you from the world headquarters of Remodel Revolution, deep in the heart of the great state of Texas. This is the show where there's no sports, no politics, and no mean people. And today, just to make sure we brought a softer side to Remodel Revolution, I invited my good friend, Mr. Steve Long, to come host for us. Welcome. Thank How you. How are you, sir? I'm great. How about yeah. you, Alex? Uh, hey, I'm really good. You made it through Thanksgiving okay? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I see you got the old the old pilgrim beard going. Santa Claus. Yeah. Oh, uh, Santa. Santa, yeah. that too. I got a yeah. Santa suit. <laughs> I do. For the grandkids. Do you really? I do. Yeah. I, I, I wear mine around the house. I, I My Santa's like, you know, seasonal, every season. You know, I just put on a different color hat. Okay. I'm, I'm always Santa. But... <laughs> <laughs> Today we have got a fantastic show. I have been, I, I was reading somewhere, may, maybe it was in the paper, I can't remember, and I saw a group in Dallas that I did not know existed that is doing a really, really wonderful thing for, uh, for the community. The Regional Black Contractors Association in Dallas is, is helping reintroduce uh, people that are trying for well felons and by going through trades training training them into the trades and bring them back into society help these help these men and I'm sure women uh, get back on their feet and it's a really really wonderful thing that they're doing so I contacted them it's taken us a while where we could all get to on the same page get together here for the show and so today I want to introduce to you our guests this morning, Dr. Ralph Adams and Pam, Pamela Davis. I'm sorry. <laughs> I drew a blank. <laughs> Pamela, I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, Pam Davis and Dr. Ralph Adams. And good morning. How are you folks? Good morning. How are you all? We're doing, doing great, great, Alex. Thank you for asking. We're doing fantastic. And I would like to know, our audience would like, would really love to hear, what is, give us a short history of Regional Black Contractors Association. Well, the Regional Black Contractors Association is an organization that assists minority contractors with obtaining contractual contracts. Uh, our focus is primarily on uh, small businesses. Um, with emphasis on assisting them with obtaining joint ventures, um, obtaining work, but more importantly, uh, having an opportunity to um, participate in minority participation rates as it relates to larger contractors uh, that basically have the work throughout the Dallas and Fort Worth metropolitan area. So you're helping them compete. You're helping them get out there and, and, and get, get in the middle of the fray. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's a tough job. You know, it's a tough job for anybody, but particularly the minority community historically. I, I agree, Alex. A lot of these contracts, uh, we've discovered that only 1% are black contractors. And of course, you know, they do meet the participation rate, but it may not be with people of African descent. So there is a push. Uh, we are definitely excited to be a part of engaging black contractors, but not only black contractors, we work with all, but just the emphasis on ensuring they have a part of that pie mm -hmm. uh, to actually obtain contractual contracts. And, and Pam, you're the, um, the workforce director. What does that mean? Workforce development, that's my title. And I am responsible for recruiting, orientating, and making sure that they complete the training program that we have for four weeks. And afterwards, I also assist them with job placement as well. And and that, and so you're, let's talk about the, the particular program and that's reintroducing, what do we call, what do you all call the program? The program is a construction training program. We have orientation here at our location at 2627 Martin Luther King in Dallas. 
every Monday at 930. So they come to the orientation to learn about the program. The program is for four weeks. It's free. You don't pay anything at all. You get free lunch. We also assist you with transportation, such as bus vouchers, gas vouchers, things that may be barriers. Uh, we help you to get to the training program. Also, once you complete the training program, you receive your OSHA 10, your OSHA 30, like Ralph said earlier, and you also get a $200 check. Hey, man, I might take that. Yeah. I, may, I may take that. Be there tomorrow. <laughs> so so where do y'all get your curriculum? The curriculum is provided through Dallas College okay, and the NCCR. So Dallas College basically has formulated a curriculum by cutting off the fat and we're just providing the meat of the education, which provides us a short-term vocational occupational training program. So it kind of heads, just, it heads straight into the straight into the program without all of the extra classes and curriculum that that they would normally have to take that is correct which when i went to when i first went to uh college as a young man who was not a particularly good student in high school you know in the 70s i was having fun uh the first question i asked is why do i have to keep taking all this other stuff if i want to <clears throat> if i want to do whatever it was i wanted to do at the time so i love that idea <laughs> <laughs> it's really great. You know, and over the years, there's been an emphasis uh, that has impacted all of the trades, and that's you have to go to college. So it's really exciting to see y'all have some training out there available for kids that maybe just aren't suited for college that you can get out there in the workforce and they can make a fantastic living working in any of the construction trades out there. So this yes. is a reintroduction program for people that have, have had challenges in their life. Let's talk about some of the folks that, that are coming through your program. Give us sort of a, an overall view of, of who you're getting and how their, how their success rate is. Well, I'm going to go back to, to 2019. When we first started the program, we placed an in, a, a emphasis on individuals coming out of jail and prison. And we discovered at that time that the unemployment rate was hovering about 50% for males. But the construction industry is extremely background friendly if they have the skill set and the eagerness and desire mm -hmm. to want to a long-term career or an introduction to a career pathway. And by beginning this particular program, we place emphasis on, again, uh, criminal justice involved individuals. And then it kind of blossomed to in and everybody who wanted a opportunity to go into the construction industry. So we had to change our um, concept to embrace everyone who wants this opportunity and to provide that specific training for them. That's fascinating. It's, yes. Do the majority of the individuals we serve are underprivileged. So we would say they probably fall within low or extreme low income categories and and the only requirement is you just want to do it that's it that's <laughs> that's awesome <clears throat> do y'all track your graduates afterwards to look at their success rate and basically how things are going for them absolutely in 2019 um, our job placement rate was 91 percent and so wow, our goal high. is once they complete the training is to put them on a job and strategically we, strategically, we assist contractors. We get work and our ask in return is to give our graduates an opportunity to go to work. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, Pam, you, now you're having, you're the, the, the workforce manager how hard is it to keep Ralph in line? <laughs> Ralph is really awesome. Uh, he comes from this background. He's been doing this for, I'm not going to say so many years, but some years. And uh, he is awesome to work with. And I think we work well together. Um, 
it's an awesome program. If you know of anyone out there in TV land or radio land that may be interested in our program, please feel free to send them our way. Well, the, the, the fascinating thing is that there's been a huge emphasis in the last few years on the, and now, now Steve owns an air conditioning company. And one okay. of the big challenges that he has and a lot of the, the trades have, of course, is getting qualified people to, that are trained. I mean, mm -hmm. I came up through an era where, you know, you started out with a broom in your hand and you, you yeah. worked your way up through yeah. and you, you went wherever you went with it. But these days we've had, we've needed so many people in the workforce. We've had such a, uh, a, a big expansion of the industry so quickly and it's harder and harder to find people that I, I really believe in this program. And the, the thing that I believe also that is so vital is these folks that are coming out of prison, they deserve a chance. They, they serve their time. They want to get back on their feet. I looked at some of the yes. videos of some of the people that have, are taking your course and they're super, super excited about it. Absolutely. And uh, our chairman, John Proctor, uh, started this conceptual ideology back in California and in the 1980s. And when he became chairman of the Regional Black Contractors Association, he made it clear that he wanted all contractors, even some of our industry partners, such as Turner and Beck and Austin, to ensure that some of those employed are individuals who may be criminal justice involved or re-entering back into society. Mm-hmm. It, 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 is the prison system, how do you get to these folks? Do you, are you in the system to, to get them the information they need to find you? Yes, we have several social service partners that work with the population already. So this information is being communicated in the prisons uh, once they're released, um, parole, probation, uh, several transitional houses, they're familiar with our organization and they refer those individuals to us. And your corporate, your big corporations that are, are working with you, or how are they um, involved and, and are, they, are they working close with you on, in this project? Uh, yes, they are. They, they really believe in this vision. Uh, they are truly understanding of giving individuals a second chance. But what's so powerful about this, Alex, is that they also transcend this information down to the subcontractors as an, an element of saying, we're supporting this program. We also want you as well to give those individuals a second chance if they're criminal justice involved. That's great. I'm curious, uh, how, how do y'all get funded and, and support your operations? Well, for the longest up until 2019, it was self-funded. So as individuals became members of the Regional Black Contractors Association, uh, industry partners supported our workforce development program. That was the only funding that we received to ensure that we provided this training. Now, since Workforce Solutions of Greater Dallas is involved in Dallas College, where now we have the funds necessary to um, basically pay uh, for these individuals to access these certifications, but we still underwrite a lot of this um, by providing the free lunches, providing the transportation, uh, providing case management, rental assistance, and things of that nature, just to ensure that we eliminate as many barriers as possible to ensure they complete the class and become sustainable uh, as relates to employment. Another thing that I'm really curious about that in my industry, air conditioning and heating, there's regulations in the state as to passing a background check. In many cases, we have people that can't pass the background check, but if they had assistance in appealing that and working out with, with the state of Texas itself to get approved, I could employ them. Do, do y'all help in that regard? Well, we know that um, our chairman is working with several of um, the state representatives in regards to that now. And so we are waiting 
to get an additional word on how this, that process, and I agree with you, it is a challenge yeah. to give those individuals an opportunity um, to be gainfully employed. Well, and you guys are, are just doing such a great thing. Yes. Uh, it, it's, it is, it's, it's imperative, actually. When we look at the numbers of people that are imprisoned, that's the same number that, or a large part of that is coming out. And it be, it's, it's benefits all of us in society to have these folks come out and have a job. And I love your program that it's so encompassing and you're helping them not just find a job, but you're reintroducing them into society, which I've never, of course, I've never been in prison, but I imagine it's, it's, a, whole, it's a whole new, you you should well, be, there's some I... people that, that think that, uh, but, <laughs> <laughs> but that's like coming out of a whole different world, I would imagine, and getting, you know, and then coming back into the real world. That's really, really tough. Well, there's a lot of elements uh, in getting into the trades that aren't necessarily related to whether you've been in prison or not. It's stuff like getting to work on time, planning your schedule so you have transportation to get to and from work, things of that nature. Uh, it sounds like y'all are uh, very much working with them to do those kind of things too. Is that correct? That is correct. And I'm going to let uh, Pam chime in on that because she also uh, orchestrates our life skills and, jo and job readiness training workshop. That's a good uh, question. We work with those, of course, who have barriers. So we understand because of the barriers that they may not have transportation, they may not be able to get to work on time. So prior to actually being employed, we work with those uh, individuals and in, uh, we help them understand you have to be to work on time, work out your transportation, do what you say you're gonna do, show up on time, have a great attitude, things like that. We've had people to work on jobs to get promoted because they did show up on time. They did have a great attitude. So these are things that we work with them prior to accepting the job so they know exactly what to expect once they receive the job. And we've had a great, some great uh, uh, feedback from employers stating that we have good uh, employees that have come to work and really showed up good and did an awesome job. Because you're, you're preparing them. And I, and I, I would, I would uh, suspect that for these individuals, they have to work a little extra hard. They have, they have an extra, uh, a few rungs on the ladder. So to, no pun intended that they have to climb to get to a, a certain trust level regardless. Yes. yes, we have some that's been gone away for 30 years, 15 years, I mean, so many years. So when they get out, we're introducing them to the real world. Right. Again. Not like it was back in the 70s or 80s, <laughs> but like it is today. Competition is stiff. You have to show up. You have to do a good job. If not, you can easily be replaced. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. it's absolutely true. Uh -huh. Well, so, so pleased. To, to have you guys here. We really appreciate you taking the time for us this morning. We're very proud of your, your program. You have a lot, you have a lot to be proud of, and we're very thankful that programs like yours exist for all of us. So thank you so much. Yes. Thank Alex, you. We thank you. And if I could say one other thing, Alex, none of this would be uh, possible without our president, Kim Shaw the visionary and how she has really orchestrated putting all this together. So I do definitely want to acknowledge her. You're kissing, you're kissing a little, uh, kissing up to the boss there. Okay. That's okay, Ralph. That's okay. We won't, uh, we, we missed not having Kim here today. <laughs> I, I kiss up to the boss too. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll have you on again and we'll do an update later you know in a, uh, later in the year and we'll this time we'll we'll get kim here but we awesome. but, you know we're pretty merciless around here <laughs> well alex is i would not say that about myself <laughs> thank you thank you ralph and pam we really appreciate your time today look forward to seeing you again thank you so much happy holidays thank you. happy holidays thank you
We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, Steve and I, speaking of holidays, we're going to talk about some uh, safety, some Christmas safety tips. There actually are Christmas safety tips, and I wanted to talk about this because, you know, Steve's a little accident prone when it comes to the candles and the <laughs> eggnog yes. and sometimes falling on the Christmas tree. Catching it uh, in the car. That's right. <laughs> He burns things. Um, we'll be at, back in two minutes. The hardest working and arguably most important system in our homes is our air conditioning and heating system. It heats the air, it cools the air, and it filters the air. That's why it's so critical to have it checked and maintained by the very best professionals available. It's time to contact Total Air and Heat at TotalAir.com. Get that system pruned and tuned. If you want to have the very best experience, you've got to hire the very best company. Total Air's employees are honest, well-trained, and thoroughly background checked. I never have to worry about about sending their technicians out to my clients' homes. Family owned and operated for three generations, Total Air and Heat has been a fixture in North Dallas for over 60 years. Total Air is a proud dealer of the train air conditioning system, and you know how hard it is to stop a train, so give them a call at 972-881-0020. That's 972-881-0020, or contact them at TotalAir.com today. Hearts working in our Imagine this, a totally customized, organized, and beautiful master closet. A home office that fits right into a perfect space. A pantry designed specifically for your storage needs. Imagine your home totally organized. It's time to call the design professionals at Closets by Design DFW and turn your dreams into a reality. With a design staff over 30 strong, Closets by Design works directly with you to create your dream space and they build it locally helping support the dfw community check them out at dallas.closetsbydesign.com or call them at 972-361-0010 use the promo code rrv to find out about the amazing specials and discounts available that's dallas.closetsbydesign.com or call them at 972-361-0010 and don't forget that promo code rrv closets by design sometimes when at the lawton residence when they hear the word ho 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 uh mrs lawton mrs claus says no 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 <laughs> that's true there's a lot of no 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 at the lawton residence around christmas because daddy santa claus well grandpa santa claus sometimes yeah a little, a little too much eggnog a little bit uh, a little too much celebration. So I thought today would be an appropriate time while we still have time before things can get bad to do some Christmas safety tips. And so I went online and I looked at some of the most uh, common problems that people have. And of course, this time of year, whether it's uh, Christmas or not, this is when there's more house fires than any other time of year for obvious reasons. We have our heaters turned on. We're have fires going in the fireplace. And I did not realize that candles were one of the chief causes of fires during the holidays. I thought that that was kind of interesting. And not to say that I haven't done that in my younger days. I probably did in my, my romantic era, probably uh, burned a few 50, too many candles. 50 years ago, yeah. Or as some people used to tell me, I was burning the candle at both ends. Oh, yeah, yeah. that too. <laughs> 2.8 times as many candle fires as average day on Christmas Day. That that is really stunning. The the number uh, the four most common days of candle fires is New Year's Day, New Year's Eve, Thanksgiving Day, and Thanksgiving uh, uh, Christmas Eve. I'm oh, sorry. I would about agree that. with those. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So do you like, uh, do you go out and like do like a little snowflake and candles and light them all? And My wife get... lights them. Uh -huh. I'm the candle watcher. 
You're the watcher. Yes. Uh, my job is to make sure all those are put out before we go to bed uh -huh. so we don't have a fire. And so it's yeah. not like, like, like if you don't do, like if you pass out in your chair, you've maybe a little too much rum in the, the old eggnog there. Sometimes I have backup. Yeah. <laughs> Just depends. Well, um, I, when I was uh, a, a, young, a young person, a child, my mother decided, it, bless, she passed on recently, so I can now tell this story. But I love you, Mom. Don't get mad at me. Haunt me or something. Uh, Mom decided to put some of the Christmas boughs that we use for the wreath in the fireplace. Oh, my. Yeah. <laughs> In the fireplace caught on fire on the inside. The chimney oh. caught on fire. <clears throat> and Nine, one, you can tell because there was this sort of rumbling, you know. <laughs> and there's this red glow coming out of the fireplace. What and, is inside the fireplace chef that could catch on fire? Soot, baby. Soot. Oh, okay, this so was, she it was the was resin back, from past fires. This was back in the days when you burned fire for heat. Yes. You didn't. You didn't <laughs> I mean, we didn't we we didn't have central Got heat. It. We had floor furnaces. Yeah, we all had these little stripes on our feet because we'd stand on the floor furnace, and it, we looked like like our feet look bottom of our feet looked like hot dogs that had been cooked on the grill. Yeah, because the grates were hot, and that's, you'd walk across them. <laughs> that's right. So, <laughs> that's how you stayed warm. That's why I wore a dress when I was a little boy. Yeah, because I wanted that heat to get up and warm me up. You know. Uh -huh. That's that's what I told him anyway. Yeah. It, uh, and so uh, inside your chimney, <laughs> inside your chimney, there is soot, black, yucky, sticky, tarry soot from burning things. And if you haven't had it cleaned out and you build a super hot fire in there, the soot turns into fuel and the fuel and it burns. Yep. And houses burn down because of that. They do. So don't the do it. And stuff from the wood. Yeah. Don't, don't do so it. So you do a lot of wood fires. You need to get your chimney clean. I did. A, I built a. Uh, I built a, a. I I called it an English fireplace, but it was a European type fireplace for this lady, and it was big. It, it, the thing that makes it different is that it's tall. And it's wide. You can stand in front of it. You could, you know, in a castle, they that was they their used heat. it for cooking, so they could actually have stuff they swung in. Yeah, but I mean, these, the this fire. is yeah. a big opening. Yeah. It's maybe four and a half, five feet tall. It's maybe four feet wide. I mean, it's big opening, and it starting around Thanksgiving when it started getting a little cool. My client would start burning wood and never, the fire never, never went out, out yeah. never went out for, I'm through the season if she was there. And so <laughs> she called me and she's like, um, man, this thing's not drawing. It's, the, it's not drawing. Alex, you need to get in here. Smoke getting in my house. And I go over there and it, it, clogged up? it was totally clogged. The, oh the, my the screen on top, you know, we had a little yeah. uh, spark, spark a restaurant on top. Yeah. It's completely clogged. Wow. And I'm like, hey, you're, you're going to have to slow down on, uh, you're going to have to slow down on the fire. But, or, you know, or maintenance increase. She, yeah. was a, she was a romantic. What can I say? That's I okay. Could, I could like totally relate to that. Yeah. But you have to clean your fireplace. <laughs> so I'm curious, Alex, have you ever put so many lights on your Christmas tree that it tripped the circuit breaker? Uh, probably. Probably. Yeah, I yeah. used to do that. Yeah. I had a string that of lights. Was, that was pre-LED lights. That was back in yeah, the, go yeah. the golden age of incandescent Christmas tree lights that if you touched them, your fingers would sizzle. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but I literally put strings of light, one string of lights per branch on the tree. Per branch? Yes, sir. You didn't I need... hope it was a little tree. No, it was a big tree. A big the, tree. The branches were removable. Oh, oh. So uh, it wasn't a life. So you call you call a removable branch a branch? Yeah. Okay. It is a branch. It comes off the tree in your hand. It's a branch. Okay. Uh, yeah. 
Not so I had, you know, like the 100-strand <laughs> lights, the 70-strand lights, and I had some 35-strand lights. So that way as you went up. And if and the, one of them went out. I had one branch to worry about. That was great. <laughs> I loved it. But as a little kid, when they had the old-style bulbs, remember they used to use those foil icicles? Oh, yeah. 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 Well, as a little kid, I used to unscrew the bulbs, stick some of that foil in the <laughs> socket, and screw the bulb back in and watch it blow up. I do. You were that kid. <laughs> yes. You were that kid. I was kid. that kid. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I read about that. That's yeah. that's why they wrote those children's books uh -huh. about kids like you. This that's, is, well, that's this why is they started putting fuses how you in deal with the. This is how you deal with the little Stevies. Yeah. <laughs> It was the 1950s, so uh, I was Ralphie in Christmas Story, you know. Check your smoke detectors and replace the dead batteries before Christmas. Um, I like to make that at the time every year when if you, you change a, times, zone, not the zones, but you leap forward. Yeah, yeah, right. So if you have a out. little Stevie in the house, make sure the smoke detector is working and the batteries are good. Yeah, you might want to put a carbon monoxide detector in yeah. the house, too, because of me. <clears throat> Prevent cooking fires. This is another safety tip for Christmas. Prevent cooking fires. Um, uh, my wife taught me a long time ago that you can actually burn water. You can do that. All you have to do is turn it on and go read a book and watch a movie and forget it's on. Something burns. It can... She well, said it was a pan. She well, actually, probably was. The water was all pulled out. There wasn't anything left but and the this, bottom of the pan on the burner. This comes and, yeah, up, that could burn. It comes under the category of never leave the food, cooking food unattended. Now, that goes back to the smoke detector. <laughs> yes. <laughs> when you're cooking, when you're cooking your your meat, use a thermometer. There's nothing more embarrassing than when the chicken, the turkey is still bleeding when the family's ready to eat. There's, it's horrible. Or you know, like Christmas vacation where it's like eating rawhide. Rawhide. <laughs> <laughs> now, I was going to have a, a safety uh, on our Thanksgiving show, a, a safety segment on deep fryers, and I blew it. So here's a couple of things if you're going to fry your turkeys. First of all, make sure your deep fryer is on a level surface. Don't do it on the slopey part of the backyard. It never works. Like, first of all, only half the bird would get cooked if it stayed in the pot, but probably it won't. So it needs to be on a stable platform and surface, too. It needs to be on a stable platform. I'm just funning today. Um, also... Understand how to put it in. I mean, honestly, go on YouTube and look at turkey fryer fires. Yeah. Uh, I did it, and I couldn't believe that, first of all, there's like a three-beer limit before you do this. If, if the husband's doing it and all of his uh, football party buddies are over there, three beers is the limit. And don't put anybody that's been drinking beer in charge of the fire extinguisher. It never goes well. Turkeys taste terrible when they've had white fire extinguisher stuff on them. <laughs> when you're putting that bird in, you have to make sure you follow the directions. Do it slowly. Don't drop it in there. I watched one of them where they were all sitting around having a good time <laughs> drinking cold beer. And the guy just got tired of holding the turkey and dropped it in there. And poof, there goes. <laughs> there goes the garage. Um, <clears throat> it's pretty insane. Uh, test the fill level of the fryer with water and your turkey to avoid overfilling. I think yes. that's a great idea. That It really is. Especially uh, when you got a fire below the pot and the grease runs over the yeah. oil. I mean, I, that's what starts them is, is, is that the uh, oil runs over. Completely thaw your bird before frying to prevent splattering. Now, anybody that has cooked uh, bacon, <laughs> any dude that has cooked frozen bacon understands this concept. <laughs> I've done it. I didn't want to wait, you know, so I just took it, just threw it in there. Well, <clears throat> splatter marks. And burn guys, marks all over there you, you go. There you go. And guys, I want to tell you when you, you young married guys, you guys that just, just got married. 
if you want to ensure that your wife will cook every meal, do some of these things. Fry the bacon cold. Burn the water. Do some things that she goes, I'll never let him in the kitchen again. It works. I'm telling you. Yeah, never fry turkey indoors or in your garage either. No, no, don't do that. Don't do that. I don't care how hard it's snowing outside. Do it outside. Um, don't get, don't start touching that thing. You know, put gloves on if you're going to touch it. All these things that will make you kind of jerk back and drop the bird in the in the grease. Don't drop the bird in the grease. It's got to go in slow. Okay, so you got to be really careful when you're when you're frying these turkeys. Um, Keep the kids away. Keep the kids away, especially if you're at that three beer limit. Don't let the kids near the, the turkey fryer for sure. Um, if the kids are having to tell you how to do it right, you know you've had too much to drink. Have you ever fried a turkey? Uh, once, and it turned out good, yeah. but uh, I'm still an old-fashioned guy. I still brine them and bake them in the oven. You brine them? Yeah, I brine them. I love, I love brining them. Yeah, I, I, I brine them for about a day yeah. and a half, two days. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, don't let your intoxicated Uncle Joe near any of this. You just put him in the chair, in the lawn, or in the, you know, if it's cold outside. Well, if it's cold outside, put him outside, out in the lawn, in a lawn chair. It's okay to strap him in. Strap him down. He, he won't know. <laughs> just tell him, you know. Tell him, no, it's not really cold. You've just had too much to drink. <laughs> so I guess what make sure you... your wig is secure while you're leaning over the fire. So how many grandkids do you have? I've got four. And so you, Christmas is a big deal. It is. So, so do you have like a big Christmas tree and yep. everybody comes over? Yeah, and, we get it, do a family yeah. get together. Do, yeah. you do, a, do, do, do they come over and decorate the tree with you? And no, not normally. That? I mean, there could be times that they make some decorations for the tree, like the paper chains and stuff like uh -huh. that. Or That's fun. We've done at Thanksgiving, we did, decorated some gingerbread houses. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. That's fun. Mine wouldn't last very long. That would be gone. <laughs> it would never get finished. You no. would eat it while you no, were building no, it. No. Yeah. Well, they're the icing. Yeah. The icing's susceptible to uh, theft. Yes. <laughs> Just take and squirt it right in yeah. your mouth like whipped cream. And so, um, on uh, do you do you do a natural tree or do you do the, you're still doing the fake thing? My kids do the real trees, <laughs> but my wife is allergic to cedar. Oh wow! So I I personally think making the tree artificial tree look good is much better than. Uh -huh. Suffering and who is suffering. the who is the boss of the tree? You or your wife? I put it up. She decorates it. And do you redecorate it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Take it down and no, 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 no. I don't, don't change it after. And, no, I don't. No, because no. I mean that. Now she will redecorate after me, but I don't redecorate after. My mother-in-law used to come in. She'd redecorate it three or four times. Yeah. I mean, you got to get those ornaments placed. I, I, exactly I don't even know right how place. you can see them. You need you need to have another little glass of eggnog. You're seeing double. You know, is there's our not two ornaments there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> as our kids were growing up, I used to buy them a Christmas ornament every year. The Hallmark ones, mainly the ones that lit up. Yeah. And of course, to do that, you got to pull a bulb out and plug the. Oh, Ornament plug it in. into the into the, the light, hole where the, the, light, the, yeah, the bulb right. you pulled out. Right, right. I have still, after thirty plus years of marriage, not got my wife to put the bulb back in. Oh, she when sabotages we're undecorating. it. Undecorating, uh -huh, well, yes. Uh -huh. And so I have to try you have to find it. Yeah, you've got to find it. Find yeah. the missing bulb. That's how she's keeping you keeping you occupied. It does. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Well, it's sure been a pleasure having you here. It's today. been awesome. I, I love I've talking holiday it. stuff. And yeah, safety. no, it's great, and and I hope you have a wonderful Christmas. I can't believe you too, Alex. I can't believe it's it. almost here. It's going to be eighty degrees today. We're almost at Christmas. It's incredible. Um, and thank everybody for watching the show. I hope you've enjoyed it, and thank you to the 
uh, Regional Black Contractors Association for coming on. That was really a fun discussion. They're doing great things for the community. Check out our website, remodelrev.com. Check out our uh, podcast. Our podcast is uh, gaining a little ground. I'm working it pretty hard. Uh, people are seem seeming to really enjoy it a lot. And also our YouTube channel, Remodel Revolution on YouTube. We've got over 200 videos up. We have videos of projects that we do. Of course, all of these shows, and there are some great shows we've been doing. We're getting a lot of positive response at the, on the YouTube front. And also contact me on Facebook or on the website and let me know how you're enjoying the show. I got a few comments from last week's show. I really, I really appreciated it very much. And let me know anything that you're interested in us doing in the future. If you have a, a project coming up and you're interested in a <clears throat> particular part of it, maybe redoing kitchens, maybe decorating bathrooms, whatever it is, uh, let me know. We'll be we'll get someone on here and we'll talk about it. And we hope you have a wonderful. Well, we'll see you before the holiday, so I'm not going to go there. <laughs> we'll be back next week with another show, uh, Remodel Revolution. Thank you so much. Ho ho ho! <laughs> no no no! <laughs> <laughs> opinions of this program are for educational and entertainment purposes only and are not intended to replace the recommendations of a hired professional. You can catch Remodel Revolution anytime. Follow the show on the website remodelrevolutionradio.com or on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest using the handle at Remodel Revolution Radio. You can always listen to the show on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, and tune in and watch the show anytime on YouTube.